I have a strong feeling that with uh, us being now in this international draft format of having the two phases, if Yugen Dynasty did their homework, if they're capable of out-drafting Pride Stark and securing those early game heroes, that could put them on the right foot to victory in game number one. Yeah, that, yeah, that's definitely going to be true as, as we are heading into picks and bans here. Interesting to see the Elsu making a ban appearance as well. Yugen is kind of heavily favoring the 80 carries as of right now. The Lindis as well as Elsu, they do not want to give those away. That leaves open Annette, that leaves open Richter, that leaves open Varus. So there's a lot on the table right now to be picked. That's, those are both target bans though, because Ra plays an incredibly good Elsu, and you cannot let Zane get the Lindis. So Pride Stark, I think, are on the losing end of this draft so far. I am a, I am a, of a strict opinion, Sephira, uh, Sephira and Varus will, oh, never mind, I was to say, they're gonna take Sephira away. Uh, so, never mind, ignore that point of analysis. Yugen Dynasty, though, have an opportunity here. I like this. Varus, first yep. opportunity. It's immediately going to be locked in for Yugen Dynasty. They have that on side lane. Haven't seen that skin for her yet either, so oh. surprise, surprise. Now, that leaves open Richter, which is an almost immediate lock-in for Pride Stark Empire, as well as beginnings, potentially, on that teamy, which then leaves open the Annette for Yugen Dynasty. Yeah. The Annette pick on Yugen Dynasty will be a crucial one because Varus and Annette combination will be so deadly. The cuffs into Varus stun will work wonders for them if they're going to be able to execute this one as we do have Talana's being picked up as well. So that's a good choice there because that's going to leave a little bit of a less choice in terms of AD carries for the side of Rice Dark Empire to work with. This Talonas would be a very good addition, I think, to the team. You put him on dual spirals down in the bottom lane and farm him up as aggressively as possible. It will be, I think, a relatively new addition to the team in Marcus, most likely playing that Varus. And that's going to be very fun to keep an eye on because previously it would have been Hitman. Hitman was recently traded away from Yugen. Now, we're seeing a Violet Hover, and I want to make a quick point on this, especially if this gets locked in. What we are seeing immediately from the beginning of both of these matches is in previous games, we have seen teams prioritize the mid lane in the first series, or in the first phase, explicitly because the hero pools do not run deep. We are going up against the team now, specifically in KZ Fox, that has a deep hero pool and has the opportunity to play whoever, depending on what bands come out. Yeah, that's definitely true, but I do like the Violet pick here because going into the second phase of bans, Yugen Dynasty could have denied that Violet going onto the jungle as well, so that would have made Pride Stark's Empire choice of AD carry just be a minuscule amount of one because there's more investment, something else basically working for them. TJ, he's going to be on the Violet. That means if Zane is, get to do, if Zane is able to do Zane things and farm up in the jungle, things could be scary if you're at Yugen Dynasty. How can you get, or how can, yeah, if you're Pride Stark Empire, how can Yugen Dynasty now change up this to potentially offset that farming heavy style that we're going to see out of Zane on that Violet. I think they kind of already have that Talonas as a massive asset to them. Now they know there's going to be a Violet. Uh, use the fact you have that Talonas in sideline to pull out something with the capacity to dive into the enemy back lines. Uh, the other option as well is oh. get Monday yep. over to a Superman uh, and see maybe if you can disrupt uh, the front line in order to get a little bit more into the back line. Well, KZ Fox doesn't get his signature Kali, but Tulin is left on the board, an immediate lock-in for Pride Stark Empire, as now Yugen Dynasty have two picks left to round out their roster. They need a jungler, they need a mid laner. So there's that melee assassin I was thinking about, uh, and because they have that melee assassin now to play inside the jungle, they need to start looking at what they're using in order to create that opening. The number one problem I see for them is this Teamy. They need to be able to get past the Teamy or burn the Teamy down twice, and for that, they're going to be looking for big burst damage that uh, is able to just assassinate anyone in an instant so they can repeat the trek. I'm absolutely baffled here. What are they going to go for middle in the Yugen Dynasty side? Because I, I would have guessed for them to go something like Liliana, but they banned no, they her, so Ooh. they're going to hover over the Ignis, but I would like Krixie just a tad bit more for those team fight scenarios. No, I like the Ignis actually a lot, or the Alistair. Either of those options but are good to me. Burst. Uh, the Alistair can be incredibly bursty. If you get into the late game, use Matrix of Woe on top of Magic Barrier, that's a ton of damage, and it will operate very well uh, with the Teamy, because if you kill, kill the Teamy once, uh, you get this Resurrect, and you can shut down the Resurrect. Pride Stark, having seen that, need to go for a high HP engage to break that up. And what better way to do that than the big man himself, Crashed, seems to be the hover now for Pride Stark Empire. You want the beef, you want the disengage, you want the disruption, to be able to create an opportunity, Price or Campfire can do just that. He has a little pirate ship. Yes, he does. It's he all, never saw that it before. It belongs to him. 
It's oh. <laughs> Bamboozled again. I was really happy for Crest for a moment. Okay. I like oh. the <laughs> pickup coming through. I think that's a very good option because the crash will allow them to kind of break the front lines. Uh, I was just kind of talking up the ability of this Alistair to win trades. The Alistair's gonna be in a lot of trouble if he's nailed by the Metamorphosis. It'll push him all the way back and reset uh, their engage. It's gonna be a lot, I think, for Yugen about protecting Telenos and Alistair in their back lines with the Annette and relying on that to create an opportunity for the Krikdak to get into the back lines of their opponent. I think it's more important to talk about what happens before we even get to that point. Kricknack, we kind of glossed over it a little bit on Monday. Kricknack has the opportunity in the early game, especially with the Annette Roam, uh -huh. to disrupt Zane in the jungle. That's gonna be a huge component for me and what I'm looking forward to, to seeing is, that's always the question, can you stop Zane from being Zane? That yeah. is the key to success in the early game for Yugen Dynasty. They do have a composition though that can combat that. I don't actually think Yugen are gonna be playing pretty ag very aggressively here. I think uh, they'll try they to scale to. up for it. They uh, need to. And normally, I would say that that would be a devastating result, but you can have the better scaling composition, in my opinion, because the Violet is kind of capped these days. Tulin is considered kind of capped. Opposing them, you can have the late game power of that Telenos, the late game power of that Alistair. Uh, the Annette will get very, very tanky, and the Krikdak we've just seen does decently towards late. But are we confident enough in Yugen Dynasty's late game team fighting against a, against a unit that is as powerful together when they are together in Pride Strike Empire? That is the caveat. Yeah, well, uh, I was gonna say the Violet actually will get countered by Kricknack post level four because Kricknack can go for an incredibly easy ganks on that Violet. And Violet, uh, basically pre three items is not gonna deal a whole lot. So Bright Stark will have to just basically throw everything they have. Plenty of questions to be answered, gentlemen, as Yugen Dynasty and Pride Strike Empire take the stage for our second match of the North American region. Game one starts now. Indeed we do as Pride Stark already in the middle of the map. They're gonna go for an aggressive invade. Violet gonna be on the opposing red buff with Crash being around as well. This side of Yugen Dynasty, they haven't found this out just yet, but Kricknack is instantly gonna go on to the enemy red buff there as Teamy is gonna scout him out. Monday is gonna be looking to get the buff. Chicken is gonna be putting a little bit of poke damage down onto Gazy Fox, who's going to be looking to deal it a little bit himself. Monday does get the red buff, but unless KZ Fox has gone low, there's a couple of more auto attacks need to be Zane. done. Oh, Booty Boots on the four will mean the Yugen Dynasty are going to lose one of their members. Marcus is going to be the second to fall as well. KO comes around. Pride Stark get a dream start in invading and getting those kills. That was exactly their dream start, like you say, and they're not done yet with Chicken caught out. Yeah, there's gonna be the wall put down by Sloy, but it's not gonna deal a whole lot as Chicken goes down. That's three for zero start for Pride Star, and yet another buff into the hands of Zane. We talked about it, or I mean, you guys talked about it on the uh, desk as well. Zane, you need to stop him, but right now he's unstoppable. The number one problem from that was that Yugen weren't decisive enough. They knew there was an invade coming through into their jungle. Dual Spirals gave them that information. Rather than immediately respond by collapsing on the invade or by pressing into the enemy jungle, they considered both. Dual Spirals poked in, decided it wasn't a great idea. Monday went into the enemy jungle all by himself. If they had committed to any one of those courses of action, this would be fine. Maybe not ideal, but fine. Yeah, well, the side of, oh. uh, whoa, Jugen Dynasty gets initiated on over the wall there by Chain Lance coming through. Sly's gonna have to run away from this one. Half HP on him, and Might Golem does come up, which means Bright Stark is looking for yet another objective steal into their books, and indeed they get that onto Zane once more. Zane has been double buffed this entire game, and it's not even been his buffs, it's been the opponent's buffs. Yeah, Zane absolutely dominating in terms of gold. Uh, small, oh, Marcus will get to safety. Small victories for Yugen Dynasty. Oh. Dual Spirals has been doing all right until oh. now. Finally, Timmy does get brought down. Monday's on the run away from Ra, who's been chasing him as that metamorphosis crashed. Zane now running out after Sly as well. Does want to get that poke down onto him. The small victory was that the Talonas was doing all right. Now they're no longer doing all right, falling significantly behind for the first time this game. But that is how they get back in the game. Again, so much of the late game potential for Yugen Dynasty revolves around that Talonas getting farmed. 
Yeah, that is going to be the case indeed. But the problem right now is that they do not have the farm to fight any of the buffs in the jungle. There's going to be Thunderbird connects on to Monday. A little bit of misplay from Chicken, who could have stepped and blocked that from connecting. That was a, a dangerous way of living. He knew it wasn't going to kill him. Mm -hmm. He did the math, pulled out his calculator. Mm -hmm. He was like, that's not going to hit him. Step back, let the Thunderbird go by. Yeah, he was yelling at Chicken like, dude, I can take this, trust me. I'm entirely capable of taking this Thunderbird. That's how he sounds in my head. Oh, yeah, dual well. spirals. Oh, dual spirals. That was getting caught out. There's going to be the metamorph scum through the arrow of chaos. That was get popped, but it doesn't go through. Meanwhile, bottom line, we do have another fight happening. Monday is going to be able to get one of these kills. Monday. KZ Fox is going to go low. There's a thunder collapse coming through. Monday still chasing KZ Fox and finally does get him raw. Is on the retreat as well. Zane has been putting down those tactical fire stacks up on the members of Yugen dynasty but it is a good fight for them that's actually a major victory for you can because of how many kills they get into monday monday needs every little bit of farm because you dynasty lost so much their jungle in the early game so him getting kills is maybe a way of him farming up a little bit of gold yeah well it definitely is oh 12 spiral took one tactical fire and that's almost half hp on him, so yeah, that's uh, that's not a good sign if you're on the side of Yugen Dynasty. They've shifted Sly down to the bot lane to eat uh, all this wave. This is a really heads up play. By bringing Sly down to the bot lane, he's still getting farm and they keep the bot lane up. Now you might ask what happens to the mid wave. Well, they fed that to Monday while they had players down, meaning that overall, Yugen Dynasty actually are able to distribute the gold very well. Whoa, wait, did Rock get that? No, because he jumps in close. Monday, does secure that, but he loses his own life in the process. Meanwhile, top lane, the tower has gone down. Pride Stark is looking at every objective on the map at the same time. You can die and they're gonna lose another one. That's three people down across the board, as well as the tower, as well as an Abyssal Dragon. If Dual Spirals can't hold the bottom lane, it's all but over in the early game. We're looking at like a 10, 15 minute win at this point for Yugen on the turnaround. Not impossible, but certainly unlikely. He's gonna seed the ground. The tower's gone with it access to a whole bunch of Yugen's jungle. See, right now, I do not like the Alistair pick. He has had no impact on this game whatsoever. He's farmed up, sure, he's level seven and just getting a little bit of farm, 2.0, uh, sorry, uh, 2.3 thousand in his pockets. He hasn't had the impact they were looking for in the middle. That's why I would have liked to see something other than that Alistair. But finally, Yugen Dynasty are gonna be forced to take another fight. Dual Spirals does go down. That's the Tell Honest that you want to have farming getting taken down. Tell Honest hasn't even completed one item. Yeah, Dual Spirals has been really struggling in this bottom lane, in large part due to the rotates coming in. Zane's been a major part of that. You can see how aggressively he's been farming. Uh, I'd also like to shout out how Beginnings is playing the team -y. They've not yep. They're not only using the scavenge passive of the team -y to amp up the farm, they've also built Waterstone, and they're just roaming around the map alongside Zane. That's two items, the passive and the item actually, that are generating extra gold for anyone nearby. And that's why Zane is currently level 10 and has more gold than everyone else on the map. Oh, there's the snipe happening on the slide as well. Chicken's gonna go low. The ultimate's being popped there as beginnings on the sidelines. He's gonna get caught out. There's the ultimate coming through here. He's gonna respawn back up. Zane is incredibly low. There's the Varus coming into play. And Varus once again gonna get the AoE. There's another trade happening as you can dynasty. They hold on. Arrow of Chaos is gonna be off target. Get KZ Fox moving forward with that Thunderbird, but he's not gonna get too much. Monday comes in from the sidelines from downtown, but doesn't get the kill there as he's gonna go down to time. Not gonna be worth it. Monday had been chasing beginnings around the side of that fight for the entire duration of it. <laughs> right when that fight opened, he got a kill on the beginnings, but the booty or the being a bro allowed the resurrect, and then it was the chase was on. <laughs> well, I really would have preferred Monday to leave beginnings and rejoin the fight, or leave beginnings and go clear wave elsewhere if he wasn't sure that they would get the kill. So it was a game of, of bug and raccoon. Raccoons, not cat the mouse. There's, there's two raccoons. Yeah, that's there. true, that's true. Raccoon eye, as, there, raccoon. as the plural or no. <laughs> well, well, indeed, you can Dynasty, but they did get a good fight. If you can Dynasty can a couple of more like this, they have the potential of coming back. The only thing is they need to hold on to the objectives. They can't let these towers go down, because the more towers start going down, the less map control they will have. This is really rough for Yugen, like you say, because of their map control, but also because of the characters they need to be able to step up and take the forefront have been really struggling. Monday is the exception to that. He's been doing all right. 
he needs to be their lead kind of here, diving oh. in. KO's gonna be coming in from the sideline. Sly is gonna be taken out of the back line. There's Zane going down early on. Beginnings, he's gone down as well. Sly is the only casualty on the side of Yugen Dynasty, so it's looking rather good for them right now. Dual Spirals is giving the chase going. Monday is gonna be wrapping around to the top side of Bright Star Gaming. They're all looking for this fight. Finally, KO is gonna be taking a fight up against Chicken. There's the Arrow of Chaos. It's gonna connect onto KO. Bright side, they're gonna reset this fight a little bit. Dual Spirals is gonna get jumped on. Marcus is trying to deal whatever damage he can, but he is forced to jump away with Venom. Chicken is on the run and on the retreat, but there's nowhere for him to go with the three peoples chasing him. It's gonna be incredibly difficult situation, and Yugen, they just overcommit to that fight. If you can cut their losses after Monday gets that double kill, they win that fight, no yeah. question. But you can stays around, or Monday rather, stays around. And again, a little bit of mispositioning I feel on Monday. He's so uh, concerned with getting another kill that he duels KZ Fox up top when KZ Fox has a level advantage over him, a gold advantage over him, and had an HP advantage in that fight. There was no way he came out on top. Okay, he's gonna get caught out. There's the arrow of chaos coming through. Oh, Booty Poots is gonna be activated. Or sorry, Pika Pro is being activated. So he's gonna be back up. Monday has to back away from this fight as he's low HP. Zane has joined the fight as well. Because they don't get Zane with the initial commit of Monday, this looks dire. They must shut down Zane in order to win any fights. Yeah, they indeed need to. Bright Stark now looking for the middle tower. It's being dealt a lot of damage to them with the poke there. Zane is going to be coming in as well with those tactical fires. And finally, Bright Stark is four members strong. KO is still missing in that equation. Beres is not going to be there as well. Monday's been doing a really good job picking up as much farm as possible around the sides of these fights. He's so reliant on getting those Soul Reaver stacks built up, but he's been doing a great job clearing away, stealing individual uh, minions and monsters in the jungle. It, it, it's still working out for him. There's the Metamorphosis being popped by Price Stark. They're looking for the dive. Dual Spirals get saved. Chicken is going to be running away. Sly has to flicker away. There's Monday on the sidelines trying to go up against KZ Fox, but Monday finds himself in a dire situation. He goes down. Beginnings is going to get that kill. Marcus sticking around to the side of the team fight, but he's not going to join from there. Monday, pick your targets. You can't kill KZ Fox. He's got too much mobility. Yeah, that's the problem. He needs to go on to uh, potentially Zane and collapse with the team. He cannot be going on all by himself. He just does not have the item built currently to do that. And he's several times gone for those isolated picks onto players like KZ Fox or even dove into full teams. He is playing really well right now, but he's not playing that well. The one advantage is when he goes around the side like that, he did damage KZ Fox enough. The Prime Stark fell back. That gives a moment for Yugen to recover. I said 10 to 15 minute mark is when their gold would start to even out and maybe they had a path back into the game. We're currently at the 10 minute mark and that's a 10k gold lead. So I'll say maybe we're looking more at the 15 minute mark. So we're going to be looking at a 30 minute game here in Baller Series. Is I that what you're saying? No. If you can, can hold on till 15 minutes and win a sick team fight, then it's possible. Well, no, oh. if that happens. The snipe coming through from Zane once more. It's going to be a pinnacle there. Sly takes a lot of damage. There's Arrow Chaos to stop the Zane poke from coming through onto Sly. KO has gone for the kill onto the bottom lane. Doesn't get that in the end as well. He's being forced to back away from that fight as Zane is dashing back and forth top line. We're going to see a little bit of hope coming through. Sly's going to be stunned up. Metamorphosis has been activated as well. Zane's going to jump over. Well, there's the snipe coming through from concussive rounds of Zane, but it's not going to kill anybody just yet. Bright Stark still looking for the kills and they get Sly down. That's a crucial kill for them. Chicken is going to be running in beginnings. He's being forced to initiate on the dual spirals, but Monday. that's what they want. Zane somehow survives the initiation. Finally, Varys does come in. Dual Spirals is alive, but Varys is doing all sorts of damage right now. He goes down, which means Marcus, all by himself, needs to deal a lot of damage. There's the Ver Oh, he's able to do it. The spin is going to be there from the chain. Another one. What? That's a triple kill, Marcus. Whoa, what are you doing? That's the power of lifesteal. He's able to drop the Venom for the Execute on the first kill. That leap takes him into the back lines. Then he just uses the lifesteal. The passive Bloody Kiss repeatedly, the, the big AOE circle around him, giving him just enough lifesteal against that multiple target horde that he's able to stay alive. And when he gets a kill after Venom, he's enraged. The lifesteal from that is extra increased. And so he's able to stay alive for such an absurdly long time that the rest of you can have respawned. 
Yeah, they have indeed, and Yugen, they're gonna go for a risky play. They need this. Chicken is gonna scout out the side of Bright Sark. They know this Dark Slayer is going down, but it's a little too late. Just Chicken run. has gone down, and they have gotten the Dark Slayer. They need to get away from this one. Arrow of Chaos committed as well. There's the magic barrier coming through, so they need to get away. Alistair is gonna be a little bit slower on the retreat side of things. Varus is still gonna be alive, but they need to stall for 30 seconds. That was very well done, but like you say, 30 seconds on two key reasons spawns Monday and chicken oh that's gonna be a little bit of a catastrophic thing dual spinals gets taken out of the cage and instantly Marcus the next to follow venom gets him to a safe distance of bright star gaming the snipe is not gonna happen but he needs to get back to defend the face there's nothing right there because he gets taken down as well that's the Drake happening but it's not gonna be enough the core is gonna fall and bright star secure themselves to game one